Hello, my name's Jay and I'm a professional artist. I'm a painter and an illustrator. I also teach lots of workshops and do online tutorials. And I paint with adults as well as children and families. So as well as painting, one of my interests is actually history of art. And I really like the idea of looking at painters from the past, and looking at the colours they used, the subjects, the techniques, and how they completed their paintings. It's always really interesting to see how that affects what we paint today. So one of my favourite painters is called Gustav Klimt. And he was born in 1862, just outside of Vienna, which is the capital of Austria. He was from a large family and both of his parents were quite artistic. So his dad was actually a gold engraver and his mum was very musical. His brothers were also very good painters. So at the age of 14, Gustav got a full scholarship to the city art college, which was the Vienna School of Arts and Crafts. And a full scholarship meant that they were so impressed by his skills and his painting abilities that he didn't have to pay at all. Um, his younger brother also went a few years later and they were both really good painters. They didn't have a lot of money, the family, so it was really good that they managed to get their places there. They worked really hard, but what their work focused on was actually architectural painting, so a lot of interiors. And in fact, when they left um, the college, the brothers set up with a friend in a studio together and they specialised in painting interior design and especially theatres. So I suppose it wasn't really a surprise when in 1894, Gustav was actually commissioned to paint three paintings for the ceiling of the Great Hall at the University of Vienna. The only problem was by this time, Gustav had really started experimenting with other styles of painting. So the people of Vienna, the politicians, all the educators, um, even the church, were very used to very traditional painting. Gustav wanted to try something different. So it took him six years to complete these paintings. And when he delivered them at the turn of the century, 1900, they were met with some surprise. He had used all of his new techniques and looked at painting in a new way. And they were just too uh, unusual, really, for all of these academic people. And in fact, sadly, they were never hung up. In later years, they were actually destroyed. So Gustav really took this quite badly. He really didn't want to do commissions anymore. Normally in commissions, it's when an artist is actually asked to paint something for a specific area. So it could be for a book illustration or for some packaging or a painting of a person, someone famous, or in this case, something for a specific building. And he really didn't want to do that anymore. He started to do his own work and he became more and more experimental. So when you have groups of artists, they're very often called a movement. And we have lots of those um, over the years. So he was very much associated with movements such as symbolism, Art Nouveau. And he actually set up his own movement, which was called the Vienna Secession. And he set up a group of like-minded artists and they all liked to experiment and move away from the very traditional paintings. Um, the Vienna Secession so also um, put on exhibitions. They encouraged new younger artists to come in and they passed on some of their skills to them. So it was a really important movement in Vienna at the time. It didn't go down very well with the, um, with the upper classes at all and a lot of the politicians and again the church they frowned upon it but they carried on so Gustav really was so disappointed by the reception of his new work that he very much um, became isolated I guess we'd call him a hermit today and he set up his own studio no longer working with his brother or his friend 
and he very much worked alone. He didn't really encourage visitors to come and see him work. And uh, in fact, he got to the stage where he didn't really even bother getting dressed to paint. He would wear a pair of open toed sandals. We'd call them sliders or flip flops today, I guess. And he wore a long flowing robe. He didn't really like visitors because very often he didn't even wear anything underneath. So surprise visitors, not a good idea. So he carried on working and he discovered that he really loved to go back almost to his father's traditions of using gold and metallics. He used a lot of gold leaf. And this is really uh, prevalent in a lot of his paintings. We see it an awful lot. And this is called his golden phase. And some of the most important paintings of his career came about at this time. One of the most famous ones that we see is called The Kiss. Another one is Hope Two, And another one, which is really lovely, is The Tree of Life. They're all quite different, but they all involve his use of gold. So over the years, his paintings have influenced many, many people from... Uh, fabric designers, fashion, interior design, other painters. And his paintings have raised some of the most money ever for auction. So we're going to take a look at some of his work, the techniques that he's used, and why these paintings have become so popular over the years. Well, the first painting we're going to take a look at is The Kiss. It was painted in 1907 and is probably one of Gustav Klimt's most famous paintings. This has been reproduced for many years on fabric, on interiors, canvases, and most people are familiar with this painting. It was actually the last painting that he did in his golden period or golden phase, and it uses an awful lot of the gold leaf that he became very famous for. Klimt did like to travel, and in 1903, he went twice to Ravenna and there he saw lots of mosaics. And this is what influenced this painting. If you have a look closely, you can see that a lot of it is made up of blocks of colours. He's introduced in amongst the gold, some blocks of black, as well as these circles of various different colours. It's a very large painting. Um, it measures about 180 by 180 centimetres, so six feet. Even though the painting wasn't finished, it sold very, very quickly. He'd very much like to paint people. And this one is quite unusual in that it features a man and a woman. Normally, he very much focused on the female form. Interestingly, he's about one of the only famous painters that never did a self-portrait. He always said, if you want to know about me, look closely at my paintings. Well, the next painting we're going to take a look at is called The Portrait of Adele Bloschbauer 2. He did a previous one. This is painted in 1912 and it's after his golden phase. And you can see here he's using an awful lot more colour. So Adele was the wife of a very wealthy industrialist who was really fond of art and he would pay a lot of money for paintings. He was what we would call a patron. And he had this portrait done of his wife and it hung in their home. So what I think works really well and I love about this is the mixture of colours that he's used. And I can see that he's been influenced by lots of different painters. So he hasn't really concentrated very much on the body on this one, but he's very much focused on the face. And going back to his symbolism, he has used a very large hat around the head to almost create a halo. So this painting created a record. In November 2006, 
it was sold at Christie's for an incredible 88 million. In fact, it's become the fourth highest period piece of art at auction at the time. So this last one is the Tree of Life, painted in 1905, back in that golden period again. And this is my all time favourite Gustav Klimt painting. It's a really important painting because it's actually the only landscape um, that he created during that golden period and became very, very popular. So it's called the Tree of Life. It's very symbolic. And a lot of people still uh, love this painting today. People have it hung in their homes. They have it printed on fabrics, all sorts of things. So the swirling branches create this mythical symbolism. So back to his original symbolism movement. And it suggests the movement of life, an ongoing life. And also he's put the roots in here. So the branches reaching for the sky and the tree of life roots into the earth. It's very, very symbolic. So one of the really important things about this painting, the tree of life, is that the more that you look at it, the more you actually see. When I first saw this painting, I was so focused on the tree, I didn't realize that there were two figures of women either side. I really like the contrast in them that on this side he's used triangles to form the dress and on this side lots of circles. So there's so much going in on, on in this painting that you can stand and look at it for a long, long time. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Gustav Klimt today and perhaps you'll go away and have a look at some more of his paintings. Thanks for joining me.